In this video, we're going to go over a few examples dealing with area scale factor. Determine the scale factor that relates each pair of similar shapes. So often what happens is when we're talking about scale factor, unless it has the word area in front of it, usually scale factor is referring to the linear scale factor or what side lengths will convert one shape into another. And I guess in terms of converting, I more mean scaling, as in enlarging or reducing. So what we have here is the area of this first trapezoid is 5 centimeters squared, and the area of the second trapezoid is 11.25 centimeters squared. So how I could compare this and talking about from my last video, the linear scale factor, when I'm looking at what converts side lengths to side lengths, when I square this value, what I get is the area scale factor. So what we can start with is, and I tend to use the letter K to represent the linear scale factor. When I take the linear uh, scale factor and I square it, I'm going to be left with the area scale factor. Because I have two areas, I'm able to actually figure out what that area scale factor is. So k squared is going to be equal to 11.25 divided by 5. When we simplify that fraction, what we're going to get here as a decimal is 2.25. So this would be the area scale factor. If I want to just know what the linear scale factor is, I'm going to square root both sides, and this will leave me with k. And what I'll have here is 1.5. So what this value is saying is that the all of these side lengths, when I am enlarging, enlarge them from this shape into that one, is that each side length is going to be multiplied by 1.5 to go from the smaller trapezoid to the larger trapezoid. So let's try one more example. Determine the area of the larger triangle. From the diagram that I've been given here, what I know is that the area of the smaller triangle is 12 centimeters squared. I haven't been given enough information about this triangle on the right side to calculate the area of it. To start off with, I could use this dimension as the base, but I don't know what this vertical height is. So that usual way that we would calculate the area using base times height divided by two just simply isn't going to work here. So this is where we're gonna to have to use scale factor and our knowledge of scale factor to figure out the area. Let's start with the side lengths. So we have these corresponding sides that are four to six. These are linear measurements. So we can figure out what the k value is. When I go 6 divided by 4, uh, I can write this as a reduced fraction of 3 over 2, or I can write it as a decimal of 1.5. If I have a linear scale factor of 1.5, then my area scale factor is going to be equal to 1.5 squared. When I square this, what I'm going to get is 2.25. So what this means is that when I am scaling the triangle up, the side lengths are going to increase by a factor of 1.5, but the area is going to increase by a factor of 2.25. So if the smaller area is going to be 12 centimeters squared, and it's going to increase by a factor of 2.25, I'll multiply those together, which gives me 27 centimeters squared, and this gives me the area of the larger triangle. Let's try one more example. A scale model was built to show the new park being built in the city. It was built using a scale of 1 to 5,000. On a model, the sorry, on the model, the dimensions are 20 centimeters by 40 centimeters. It has been estimated that about 75 cents per meter squared will be needed to maintain the park from spring to fall. Estimate the cost of this park. Where we want to start with this one is a diagram. So I'm just going to draw out our rectangular park. And what we know is that on the scale model, it's been built with it being 20 centimeters by 40 centimeters. And what we're doing is we're using a scale of one to 5,000. So what this is indicating to us is that our K value is equal to 5,000. Whatever we see in the scale model is going to be increased by a factor of 5,000 when they go to build this real park. When we are talking about area, because here we wanna know, again, the cost is being given as an area, then we wanna find our area scale factor. So I'll go 5,000 squared, and what we're gonna get is 25 million. So our Linear scale factor is 5,000, so meaning that the length and the width are going to increase by a factor of 5,000, whereas the area of that rectangle is going to increase by a factor of 25 million. What we want to do next is then figure out what the area of that rectangle is. So let's start by going length times width. And what I'm also going to do here is convert both of my length and width into meters because my area, the price, has been converted there into meters squared. So what we would have here is 0 0.4 meters and 0 0.2 meters. Let's find the area of that first. So we'll go length times width. And what we're gonna get here is 0 0.08, and that's now going to be meters squared. So that's gonna be the area of the actual model. 
What we want to do now is use our k squared value, our area scale factor, to figure out what the area of the actual park is. So the actual area is going to be equal to 25 million multiplied by the area of the scale factored. Oops, sorry, of the scale model. So 0 0.08. When we multiply those together, what we're going to get here is uh, 2 million. So we will have 2 million square meters for this park. And if we're going to be paying 75 cents per square meter, then we'll multiply these two values together. And this is going to give us the price that we're going to pay. And what's nice about using units here is that what I can see is that meters squared, the amount, the area of the actual park, multiplied by how much we're paying per meter squared, those units cancel, and I'll be left with an answer in dollars. So when I multiply those together, I'm going to get 1 million 500,000. So this is how much would need to be spent on the park to maintain it from spring to fall. I hope this video helps you. Please let me know if you have any questions and I will definitely answer them. Have a good day.